We're going to start today in any comfortable seat, but preferably sitting on your heels. Um, we're going to start with something called a three-part Taoist breath, um, which I love so much, but we'll get centered, grounded, and then I'll guide you through it a few times. So whenever you arrive in a comfortable position, just allow your eyes to close. And just take a nice big cleansing breath, inhaling through the nose and release through the mouth. And just start to feel settled in whatever space you're in. Relax your forehead, relax your jaw, and let the eyelids just be softly closed. Feel grounded through the tops of the feet, the shins, the tailbone. Feel the navel tuck in just slightly toward the spine, finding more length in the low back. Feel the heart proud as the shoulder blades just fall away from the ears. And letting the chin slightly tuck toward the heart, just feeling the back of your neck getting nice and long as the crown of your head lifts higher. This in your own body, feeling your head over your heart, over your hips. And just start to bring some awareness to your breath. I'm not having any control over it just yet. Notice how your breath naturally is right now. And then on your next inhale, sweep your arms out to the side and up, reaching up. And as you exhale, bring your hands behind your head and push it out to the side like you're opening up walls. <clears throat> the arms are straight, palms away. And then inhale, palms face up, fingertips come to your shoulders. And exhale, push the palms forward, curl the heart back, tuck the chin down. Inhale, palms face up, reach up, maybe a slight back bend. And exhale, fall to your child's pose. Arms can come down, forward, or behind you, whatever feels best. And then catch the wave of your next inhale. Arms come out to the side and up as you reach back up. And exhale, hands come behind the head, push out to the sides. Inhale, fingertips come to shoulders. Exhale, palms forward, heart back, chin down. Inhale, palms up, reach up. And exhale, down to your child's pose. So move through that three more times. If you start to feel like you're getting the hang of it, you can close the eyes, but I'll keep guiding you through it. So on your next inhale, sweep the arms out and up, reaching up. Exhale, hands come behind the head and push out to the sides. Inhale, fingertips to shoulders. Exhale, palms forward, heart back, chin down. Inhale, palms up, reach up. And exhale, fall, child's pose. And next inhale, arms out and up. And exhale, hands behind the head, pushing out. To move at your own pace through this. And if at any point it just becomes too much, you can just come back to your natural breath. Everything in this class is optional. Inhale, arms up, reaching up. And exhale, child's pose. I'll do one final round whenever you're ready. Inhale, arms reaching out to the side and up. 
Exhale, hands coming behind the head and pushing it all out to the side, letting go of what you don't need. Inhale, bringing in things you do need. Exhale, letting go again. Arms forward, heart back. Inhale, arms reach up, slight back bend. And exhale, surrender into your child's pose. This time, just resting here. Let your breath become natural again. Feel the weight of your tailbone sinking closer into the heels. As you inhale, scanning your spine from your tailbone to the back of the neck. And as you exhale, scanning your spine down from the neck to the tailbone. Releasing any tension in the belly. Maybe gently shaking your head no, side to side, just massaging the third eye, massaging the forehead. And maybe setting an intention for your practice today. From your child's pose, you can reach your arms forward if they're not already and start to activate your child's pose. So pushing down in your hands so much so that your arms lift. And then leaving your hands in place, feel like you're dragging the ground toward your knees as you pull yourself up to a tabletop position. So landing with your shoulders over wrists and hips over knees. And when you look back, make sure the toes are hidden behind the thighs. So we stay in line with the knees. And first, just feeling that really straight line from your tailbone through the back of neck and crown of the head. And then as you inhale, drop your belly down, lift your gaze, lift your tailbone to your cow pose, opening up the heart. And exhale to your cat pose, pulling the navel to the spine, tuck the chin, tuck the tailbone. Inhale, drop the belly, lift the gaze. Have a micro bend in your elbows and feel like you're pulling your heart forward and through. Beautiful. And exhale, curl it back, cat pose. So just close the eyes here and keep moving through these cat cows at your own pace, with your own breath. And feel free to take any movements at all that feel good. So if you want to wag the tail, take a peek back toward either hip. Or maybe circle out the shoulders or the neck. Or maybe you just stick with the cat cows. Just use this as your time to loosen up your spine. Maybe get the fluid moving around the spine. And not worrying at all about what this looks like, just feeling, letting the body just move by itself. Now, whenever you're starting to feel a bit looser, you can find your way back to your neutral tabletop. And then as you inhale, drop your belly, lift your gaze to your cow pose. Then from here, just exhale, sit your hips down on heels, child's pose. Inhale, pull yourself forward and up to your cow pose. And exhale, release back, child's pose. So we'll just move, uh, flow a few times like this. So you can inhale up to cow pose and exhale, release into child's pose. And feel the energy moving starting from your hips. Your hips are pulling yourself forward and sinking yourself back down. Let's do two more rounds. Whenever you're finished, we'll meet back in a tabletop. And from your tabletop, you can tuck your toes under, lift your hips back and up, downward facing dog. So you can keep the knees quite generously bent here and just lift the hips as high as you possibly can. And feel the energy reaching from the space in between your sit bones. Maybe you take turns bending each leg, getting a nice stretch in the opposite hamstring. 
And look the whole goal of this pose to be getting your spine as long as possible. So as close as you need to step your feet or as much as you need to bend your knees, feel free to do so. Just let your spine become super long. And to get the right position in the shoulders, first of all, we'll root down in the hands. So feel yourself really rooting down extra in the base of your pointer, the base of your thumb, and the base of your pinky. And also in every fingertip, so you feel the suction like grip against the floor. And then bend your elbows so they come out to the sides. And then curl them in as if you were hugging a beach ball with your triceps. And then straighten out the arms. So you're feeling that broadness across the shoulder blades. Take a few more breaths here. Relax your head, relax your face, your jaw. Beautiful. Two more big breaths. And throughout the class today, feel free to move as much as you want to move or be as still as you want to be still. This is your practice. So listen to your body at all times. On your next inhale, you can bend the knees, look up toward the top of your mat, and just start to walk your feet up to meet your hands. You can go slowly, no rush. And whenever you arrive, we'll meet in a halfway lift as you inhale. So flat spine, tabletop spine. And then exhale, forward fold. So bend your knees so much so that the belly can rest on your thighs. Just let your head dangle, yes. Dangle, no. Maybe grab opposite elbows or maybe just let the arms hang out on the floor. <sighs> and the feet are about hips width distance, so it's about two fists in between the feet. And maybe you lift the toes so you can really feel the four corners of your feet. And then you let the toes grip back down to the earth, shifting your weight forward and back. And just finding that middle ground. And feel this line you're creating from your tailbone through the low, middle, upper back, back of the neck and crown of the head. Even with your knees bent, try to lift your sit bones a little bit higher. Two more breaths here. Relax the face, the shoulders. And then on your next inhale, really slowly start to roll yourself up to stand. One vertebrae at a time. And letting the head and shoulders be the last to roll up. And bringing the palms to face out at the top in your mountain pose. Let's let the blood settle back in up here. You guys can stay closed or you can open to a soft gaze. And we'll move through a few sun salutations. So this class will be doing vinyasa flows for the first half and then hold some yin postures for the end of the class, which will be really nice. We'll feel really good at the end. So whenever you're ready, you can inhale, reach both arms up. And exhale, hinge at your hips so you have a flat back for as long as you can, and then fold into forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, long spine. Exhale, release. Plant your hands down and step back to a plank position. Always option to lower the knees down here. We'll just hold this for a few times, or for a few breaths. And to see that your wrist creases are parallel to the front edge of your mat. So it might be that your pointers are facing forward and maybe your middles, but it's more important about the wrists. Feel the heels reaching back and crown of the head reaching forward. Hold the navel up to the spine, lift the back of the heart. Two more breaths. And then slowly lowering down the knees if you need to, bending the elbows alongside the ribs and slowly bring yourself down to lay on your belly, just feeling that resistance. 
root down in the big toes, root down in the pubic bone, and inhale, lift your heart, baby cobra. So you feel the shoulder blades draw together down the back, the gaze is in front of your mat, so the, the neck stays long. And exhale, release. With the hands under the shoulders and the elbows close to the ribs, push yourself back up either the way you came, through a plank or through tabletop. Tuck your toes under, lift your hips back and up, down dog. Perfect. Three breaths here. Maybe reel the heels a little closer to the mat the second time around, maybe not. And next time you inhale, bend the knees, look up and step up, landing halfway lift as you inhale. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, roots rise, reach up. Exhale, hands come to heart center. Move through a few more flows, adding in some more things. When you're ready, inhale, reach both arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, long spine. Exhale, release. Plant the hands down, step back to a plank. You can do exactly what we did before if you'd like, or if you have chaturanga and up dog in your practice and you wanna practice that, feel free to go ahead. And we'll meet in our downward facing dog. So whenever I say move through your flow throughout the practice, it's always optional. You can pick whichever flow suits you best in the moment. You can skip the flows all together. It just adds a little bit more fire to your practice. So listen to what you need today. On your next inhale, raise your right leg back and up. And we're just gonna keep the hips square to start. So the toes are pointing right to the mat and that you're reaching through the heel. And you can even look back and maybe see that your hips are staying square. Perfect. Feel the right leg, just an extension of your arms and your spine, actively reaching up. And then bend your knee into your chest using the core. Shift your shoulders over your wrists and let the foot come at the top of your mat, maybe using your right hand to help it along. Let your left toes step in toward your one leg. So back toes are facing front left corner of the mat and arms rise up for your one. So just feel like your hips are totally square to the front of your mat. There is headlights on your hips going straight forward. Your feet can be as wide or as close together as they need in order to have these square hips. Perfect. And then tailbone is tucking down. So feeling that nice stretch in the front of your left thigh. Arms can be really wherever you want them. Kind of nice to have them actively reach up. You get more length in the side bodies. Maybe you want to open the heart and cactus the arms. Or maybe you want to be more closed and bring the hands to heart center. Just playing around with what feels good for you today. And feel your inner thighs drawing in toward each other magnetically and your feet dragging away from each other. Four corners of both feet are firm on the mat. Now bring your hands to your hips as you reach into the ground with your front foot, slowly straightening out your front leg. Inhale as you lift your heart, and exhale, hinge forward into pyramid pose. So you can leave the hands here if you like this. You can bring them to the ground, framing your front foot or to blocks if you have them on either side. But wherever you are, just keep feeling your right hip pulling back so that you feel the space from your right sit bone through the right heel. And you can always adjust your stance more if you need to. If you feel like the hips come unsquare, then just step that back foot in or just play around with where the feet are. And you can be leading with the heart. You can imagine that there's a string connecting your heart to your big toe. And each time you exhale, that string gets a little shorter. Or if it feels better for you to curl, you can let your forehead reach toward your shin. Plenty of options in all these poses, so just play around and find what works for you today. Mm. 
Let's take one more big breath here. And then plant your hands down around your front foot. Step your left toes back a touch and then your right toes back to meet it in plank. Move through your version of a flow and we'll meet in a down dog. So just noticing the difference in the sides of the body before we even ourselves out. And whenever you're ready, you can inhale, raise your left leg back and up. The same thing again. We're just going to keep the hips square to start. Toes pointing toward the ground, reaching through the heel. And maybe with the eyes closed, you can see how your left leg is just extending your spine and your arms. Feeling that really straight line you're creating. Nice stretch down the back of the right hamstring as well. And then use your core to pull your knee into the chest and then shift your shoulders over your wrists and let the foot come down at the top of your mat. Perfect. Step your back toes into warrior one legs and we'll inhale, rise up, warrior one. The same thing here. You can really just take some time to find your right alignment. Your back toes should be about 45 degrees facing the front right corner of the mat. Just imagine those headlights on your hips, so feeling them facing forward. Inner thighs drawing in toward each other as the feet feel like they're dragging away. Tucking the ribs kind of back under so that you keep the length in the spine. And even when you're opening the heart, keeping the the belly and the rib area a little bit more contained just to concentrate on the upper back. Beautiful. Feel the strength in your legs, maybe closing the eyes, really feeling this powerful pose. And then next time that you inhale, you bring your hands to your hips and slowly reach into the ground with your front foot, slowly straightening out that leg. Inhale, lift your heart slightly and exhale, hinge forward into pyramid. So same options on this side. You can keep the hands on the hips or bring them to the floor or to blocks. <clears throat> but wherever you are, just keep the idea of pulling your left hip back. You really feel that space from your left hip all the way through the back of the leg and the heel. Maybe even lifting the toes slightly, feeling how that changes the stretch, and gripping the toes back down. And again, you can lead with the heart on this side too, or curl out the spine and let the forehead reach toward the shin. And again, option to close the eyes in any pose today. And really, you can sense some different sensations in the body when the eyes are closed. A few more rounds of breath here. <coughs> Sending all your breath into the left hamstring. One more big breath. And then just plant the hands down around your front foot. Step your right toes back and your left toes back to meet them in plank. Move through your flow and we'll meet in a down dog. Maybe fluttering the lips, maybe letting out a big sigh. Maybe feeling the heels reaching a little bit closer to the ground. Feeling the shoulders strong and broad. Dropping away from the ears, relaxing the forehead, the jaw. And next inhale, bend the knees, look up and step up. Halfway lift, inhale. 
Exhale and forward fold. Inhale, root to rise, reach out and up. Exhale, hands come to heart center. And pause for just a moment here. Checking in with yourself. Feeling your heart beat against the thumbs, the thumbs beat back into the heart. Drawing the energy up through the soles of the feet, reaching through the crown of the head. And inhale, reach both arms up. Exhale, hinge at the hips and forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, let it go. Plant the hands down, step back to a plank. Move through your flow, we'll meet in the down dog. <sighs> We're gonna get deeper into the hips this time around. So no rush, but whenever you are ready, you can inhale, raise your right leg back and up. And then exhale to point the toes, stack the hips and bend the knee. So you might not get your right hip completely on top of your left, but feeling that sensation of what it would be like if you could. Feeling that really nice stretch down the inside of your left leg. And then feeling how the shoulders wanna open up to the right as well. And then seeing if you can root down a little bit extra into the right hand so the shoulders stay square to the mat as the hips come square to your right, feeling that twist in the torso. And any movements you want to take with your right leg, you can do. If you want to find stillness, you can. No more breaths. And then level out the hips, reach the leg long as you inhale. And exhale, bend the knee into the chest and step it in between the hands as you open up to your warrior two. So back heel pivots parallel to the back edge of the mat. So just checking in with alignment here. Your front heel can either be intersecting the back arch or in line with the back heel. You can play around, see what feels better. And tailbone is still reaching straight down. So you feel like your right hip is tucking under and your right knee is reaching toward the right pinky toe. Arms are reaching from the heart center. Lift the toes here and really activate the four corners of both feet. And then let the toes grip back down. The ribs are tucked in, the crown of the head's reaching up. Gaze can be soft or the eyes can be closed over the right fingertips. And then slowly start to reach into the ground with your front foot straightening out that front leg. And maybe you step the back toes in just a touch for setting up for triangle pose. And you'll shift your hips back as you reach forward as far as you possibly can. And then when you can't reach forward anymore, you let your right fingertips reach down, left fingertips reach up. So feel your pelvic floor pulling in and up towards the navel. And notice how that lifts you a little bit. You can pretend that there's chopsticks on the sides of your waist, and you want your waist to be pretty equal in length. The goal of this pose is to get every limb as long as you possibly can, including your neck. So feeling the crown of your head reaching forward. A few more breaths here. And then we'll just cartwheel your left hand up alongside the left ear, coming back to frame your right foot. Hop up to the back toes and step back to a plank position. We'll move through a flow and meet in a down dog. So we'll even out on one more side before we start slowing down for the practice. Whenever you're ready, you can inhale your left leg back and up. And exhale to point the toes, stack the hips, bend the knee. Same thing over here. You can take any little movements you want to with your left leg or foot or ankle. 
And then rooting down extra in your left hand. So squaring off the shoulders to the mat, opening the hips to your left. Really nice stretch down the inside of your right leg. A few more breaths. And then we'll level out the hips as you reach your leg long as you inhale. Exhale, knee comes into chest, shift shoulder over wrist and place the foot at the top of your mat. Inhale, rise up, warrior two. Same thing over here, just checking in with your alignment. Feeling that left hip now tucking under and that knee reaching toward the pinky toe. And maybe lifting the toes again, it's really activating the feet and even rooting into the outside edge of your right foot. Perfect. Feeling the power of this pose, feeling the arms reaching straight from the heart center. Shoulder blades drawing slightly together down the back as the fingers reach further away. Tailbone straight down, crown of the head straight up. And start to slowly straighten out your front leg. Maybe you step that back foot in a touch, setting up for triangle on this side. And your hips shift back as you reach forward as far as you can. And then when you can't anymore, let your left fingertips reach down, right fingertips reach up. You can always use your shin for a little support here. You just don't want to put weight on it. You want your arms to be equal length and your low belly stays really active. So that will automatically lift you up. Breathing into wherever you're feeling this the most. Maybe the inner hip, maybe the spine, maybe the back. A few more breaths. And then we'll just cartwheel your top arm alongside the right ear, framing your left foot as you lift your back heel and step back to a plank position. Move through a flow and we'll meet in a downward facing dog. Just letting it all go here. As you're ready, bend the knees, look up and step up. Halfway lift as you inhale. Exhale and release, forward fold. Inhale, roots rise, reaching up. Exhale, hands come to heart center. Feeling your heartbeat, maybe feeling the sweat, the quickness of your breath. And we'll start to slow down now, getting much deeper into the hips. Whenever you feel ready, you can inhale, reach the arms up, and exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, and then let it go. Plant your hands down. And you can either step right back to a down dog, or if you want to move through one final flow, you can do so. And we'll just meet in a down dog. And then when you arrive, you can inhale your right leg back and up. And then exhale, bring your knee, uh, right knee behind the right wrist, coming into pigeon pose. And then the right foot comes across to the left side of the mat. And you can <clears throat> take a peek back at your left foot, just make sure it stays in line with the hip. And if your right hip is super lifted, you can bring something under there for support if it bothers you. And if not, you can just hang out here. And maybe you stay lifted for a little bit if this feels good. If at any point you just want to come down and lay 
And sleeping pigeon, you can do so. So we're gonna be here for about three minutes. So <clears throat> we're now entering the yin portion of this class. And if you've practiced yin yoga before, you know, it's just longer holds in passive poses. So we just wanna make sure that our bones are supported in this pose. So feel free to use a pillow or any props you need to help you feel more comfortable. So when the bones are supported, then our muscles can relax. And in a yin practice, we want the muscles to be nice and relaxed so we can just allow ourselves to stretch deeper. We're not trying to go to our edge right away. We're just trying to find our natural stopping point and find our breath there, find some calm and peace there. And naturally, we will fall deeper into the pose. We'll surrender a bit more to gravity. You can relax your forehead a bit deeper. Let your jaw hang a bit heavier. Allow the shoulders to soften. Allow the belly to soften. And bring your awareness to any energy within your body that's resisting. Maybe you're feeling a lot of resistance in your hip, or maybe in the back or the neck, wherever it is. All your awareness there. Start to look fully at this resistance instead of distracting and running away. Practicing sitting in this discomfort. <laughs> accepting this discomfort, accepting this position we're in and coming back to the breath. Each exhale, allowing yourself to release one more thing. Here for about three more deep and full breaths. We'll see what else you can let go of. And very gently, slowly, you can begin to walk your hands back toward the hips. And to come out of this, we're just gonna shift all of the weight into your right sit bone. And bend your back leg and bring your left foot around to the outside of your right knee. So we're gonna come into a seated twist. <clears throat> so both sit bones are firm on the ground. The top of your right foot is next to the left hip. And then your left hand can come behind your seat. And then we'll exhale and twist to your left. So you can hug on to this knee if this feels good. You can hook the elbow if that feels better. And each time you inhale, feel your spine getting longer, the crown of your head lifting up. And each time you exhale, feel yourself twisting a little bit deeper. Another option with your right arm is to hold on to your right ankle on this side. That's kind of cool. Maybe your gaze comes to look over your left shoulder. Maybe you allow your navel to sink in a little bit closer to the spine. 
Here for one more big breath. And then start to unwind from the neck first, followed by the shoulders. And from here, we'll come right into a shoelace position. So you can start to heel toe your left foot off to the right and bring your left knee to be stacked on top of your right. <clears throat> so if you want this to ease off a bit, you can straighten your bottom leg. If that's like super intense for you, you can just have your left knee on top of right knee and the bottom leg straight to straight so you get a bonus stretch in the hamstrings. Or if you wanna get deeper into both hips, you can have the feet be right beside the hips. Or if you wanna come even deeper than this, you can bring your feet out so they're more in line with the knees. So lots of options. We're gonna be here for about three minutes again. And you can start off being like tall and up, up straight if this feels strong enough or deep enough. And then slowly, as you start to release into the posture, you can just walk the hands forward. Maybe if you have a block or a pillow, you can rest your head down on the hands or the hands can come to the floor. This can be a really deep, and kind of funky hip opener. A lot of deep emotions I find are stored in this position in your hips. So you'll notice that the mind wants to run away from the sensations happening in the hips. He wants to distract you or maybe the eyes want to dart around or fidgeting wants to happen. And see if you can just watch yourself want to do all of those things. See if you can just observe the want to fidget or observe the eyes wanting to look around and commit yourself to stillness. Let yourself completely surrender in this position. Getting all your awareness fully in the hips. Each inhale traveling to the hips and each exhale releasing and expanding and softening the hips. Three more deep breaths. And then very slowly, and start to walk your hands back to the hips. Come out of this, you can just bring your hands back behind you and slowly, like really, really slowly, unwind your legs. Maybe take a few windshield wipers just to reset. And then we'll do all that on the other side. So we're gonna come into pigeon on the left side, so left foot will be forward. If you want to come into that right away, or if you want to reset in down dog, feel free to do so. But we'll meet in a pigeon pose on your left side. And we'll be here for another three minutes. So you can add any blankets or support to your left hip that you need. You can support the head on your fists or maybe on blocks. Just notice anything that might be stirred up either physically or mentally or emotionally.
And just practicing sitting in that observance. Becoming the observer, staying the observer. No need to form any opinions about what the mind is thinking or what the body is doing or how it's feeling. Just let everything be exactly how it is in this moment. Resting in that knowing that there's nothing else you should be doing. There's no other place you should be. Seeing how much you can soften in your left hip. Seeing how much you can let go. About another minute here. The left side of our body is our yin energy. It's our feminine receiving side of the body. While our right side is our yang. It's our giving, our fire, our masculine side of the body. Sometimes if we have a more active lifestyle or active habits, our right side can be a lot looser or a lot stronger and vice versa. If we have a more passive laid back lifestyle, our left side can be the dominant one. Just understanding what you have, where you are and what things you might work on. We're here for about five more deep and full breaths. Very slowly and gently to walk the hands back up toward the hips. We'll do the same thing to come out of this pose. You can just slowly start to shift more weight onto your left hip. Put a bend in your back leg and just bring that all the way around, stepping the sole of the right foot outside of your left knee. And we'll just take a quick twist here. So you can bring your right hand back behind you and hug your right knee as you twist to the right. Again, if at any point this becomes too much for the knees, you can just straighten out the legs. Maybe the gaze comes to look over the right shoulder. The eyes are closed. You can just really feel in your body. Feel how your hips are squared to the front and your shoulders are squared to your right. Feel yourself twisting at the navel. Ringing out the spine, ringing out the organs. Simulating digestion. One more big breath here. And then slowly you can bring your gaze back forward, bring your shoulders back forward. And then we'll come back into shoelace on the other side. So you can start to heel toe your right foot more to the left, bringing the right knee now on top of your left. You can feel free to shift around as much as you need to. I like to kind of bring my hands on bottoms of my feet and that feels good. Any support at all that you need, maybe elevating the hips, maybe grabbing blocks or pillows. Be here for just under three minutes. And for every thought that comes up, for every, every uh, idea that pops into the head, just let that be your cue to bring your attention back to the breath. In the practice of yoga and 
meditation is not clearing the mind. It's not being completely still. It's the practice of being still and the practice of clearing the mind. So it's a constant game of watching the mind run off and bringing it back, watching it run off again and bringing it back. This is to be expected. This is what the practice is. And particularly in hip openers, sometimes some deep-seated feelings, emotions can come up. Either during the practice or sometimes after, we'll have big emotional releases. So if at any point you feel an emotional release coming in the form of tears or laughter or anything at all, just let it come. This is part of the practice too, not pushing down feelings when they come up. Just letting them be here when they arrive. Seeing if you can let go a little bit deeper, surrender a little bit more. About another minute. Count five more of your deepest and fullest exhales. Very slowly. Start to come back onto the hands, walk the hands back to the hips. And then back behind you for some support and just untangle the legs. You can do whatever you need to reset here. You can reach them long, shake them out, maybe tap them down, or windshield wipers, whatever feels right. And we'll do one final posture before we come down to our backs. We won't hold this one for quite as long. Whenever you're ready, you can just bring the soles of your feet to touch. We're coming into a long-legged butterfly. So you can let it be a little bit further away from the hips, just so that we can get into the hip abductors as well as the hamstrings. And just fold forward whenever you're ready. Releasing into your butterfly position. You can open the feet like a book, if that feels good. You can bring the palms to face upward underneath the shins. That can be really nice. Kind of locking you in place. Feeling this really nice counter in the hips. It can also be nice to bring the elbows to the insides of the knees. Bring up a little bit deeper. Relaxing the face muscles once again. Feeling the eyebrows, the forehead, the cheeks, the jaw. Everything soften. Three more deep breaths. Very gently, you can begin to walk the hands back up to your seat. Grab the outsides of the knees and slowly close them like a book. And give yourself a nice big hug here before we come down to our backs. <clears throat> and then whenever you feel ready, you can slowly start to lower yourself down to lay on your back. And just hugging the knees into the chest. And when you arrive, you can gently rock 
side to side, massaging your low back against the mat. And linger in any areas that feel good. And then whenever you feel ready, you can let both of your feet reach up to the ceiling and just shake them out here. Just for a moment, just fully releasing all the muscles in the legs. And just allow them to rest in your hip sockets. So just feel the hips being pinned down to the mat by the weight of your legs and gravity. And then reach your arms up to do the same thing. Just maybe shaking them out for a moment just to ensure that all the muscles are softened in the arms and the legs. So just allow them to rest in the sockets. So the arms resting in the shoulders, shoulder sockets, the hips, the legs resting in the hips. And just feeling the four corners of your torso being pinned against the mat by the weight of your own limbs and gravity. Feeling all the blood rushing down the legs, down the arms, away from the hands and feet. All the blood rushing into the torso, feeling the shoulders and hips being evened out by this pose. Letting the hands and feet grow a little bit warm and tingly with this change in blood flow. Just for a few more moments. Whenever you feel ready, you can just bend the knees and come right into happy baby. Reaching for outside edges of the feet or the big toes, the shins, the thighs, whatever is available. And just channeling your inner happy baby here, doing whatever feels good. You can Walk side to side, take turns straightening each leg, or just find stillness if that feels right to you in this moment. And as you're ready, you can let the soles of the feet find each other and slowly lower the outside edges of your feet to find the mat. As the knees drop off to the sides, and scoop the Baddha Konasana, reclined butterfly. And the hands can rest wherever they're comfortable by your side, maybe both on the belly, maybe a hand on the belly, a hand on the heart. Trusting your first instinct. This pose feels really nice and good for you right now. You're welcome to stay as long as you'd like. Or if at any point you feel ready to straighten out the legs and come into your final Shavasana, you may do so. Allowing the feet to fall wherever they naturally fall. Arms to lay wherever they want to lay. Allowing the full weight of your body to be supported by the mat beneath you. Releasing any tension in the forehead. Releasing any tension in the jaw. Just allowing all the muscles in your face to hang off of the body. Releasing the need to hold anything up. Letting your eyeballs fall back and down into the skull. Turning your gaze to peer into the forehead. You start to notice that pulsing sensation in the space between the eyebrows. It's 
Allow your throat to rest on the back of the neck. You feel the shoulders root heavy into your mat. The heart center and the collarbones expand. Bringing your awareness to the center of your chest and your heart. Tuning in to the rhythm of your own heart. Feeling your heartbeat expanding down the arms, releasing every muscle in the arms along the way, and into the palms of the hands. Feeling both palms and all 10 fingers pulsing with your heartbeat. And then feeling your heart deep expand down the torso, softening the ribs, softening the belly, and pulsing within the belly. Feeling that heartbeat that exists within the belly, just beneath the navel. Softening the pelvic floor and the glutes. Simply with your awareness here. Just because you checked in. Feel the length and the weight of your legs, allowing all the muscles to roll off of the bones. Feel the soles of your feet and each of your toes. Feeling the heartbeat in the soles of your feet and in each of your toes. Feel the pulsing sensation of the crown of your head. Just rest here in this total body awareness for about another minute. Allowing the healing benefits to soak into your body. you would like to stay here longer, <clears throat> you're more than welcome to do so. If you're ready to come out of this, you can allow my voice to guide you. Start by deepening the breath, consciously calling air back into the body. Energizing yourself a little bit more with each inhale. And then wiggling the fingers, wiggling the toes. Maybe rocking the head side to side. <clears throat> if you'd like to take a nice morning stretch, you can reach the arms overhead and get the body nice and long. And then just hugging the knees into the chest when you're ready, finding yourself in a fetal position on one side. No rush at all, but 
Whenever you feel ready, you can just leave the eyes closed and gently make your way back up to your seat. And we'll meet with our hands at heart center whenever you arrive. And then first thing, thanking yourselves for your practice today, for showing up on your mat every time you do. May this practice continue to heal you throughout the rest of your evening into a wonderful night's sleep. May you bring some of this love and light to everyone in your own lives. Namaste. Mm -hmm.